keep losing them. Okay, um, I used to go to the Bataan a lot um, before I was a bar owner, and I would get tired of some of those shows, so I would walk across the street and I'd hang out at the Gold Coast. And of course, Gary Chichester was there, and we would close the bar, shag everybody out, and then we just party by ourselves. <laughs> And there were nights I didn't know how the hell I got home. <laughs> Gary and those guys, I loved them. And then I got to meet Chuck. And Chuck and I became pretty good friends. And one time I was at my bar, now I had owned a bar and I, on Addison Avenue. And I noticed that a lot of things, I missed it too. I noticed that, I, you know, I was looking in the papers and a lot of the seniors for like Thanksgiving, they would have dinners for them like if Thanksgiving was Thursday, they have dinners for them Wednesday or Tuesday. And I'm thinking, what do they do for them on Thursday when it's Thanksgiving, right? So I talked to Chuck about it and I said, I wanna do this. I wanna just put flyers out to the seniors to come to the bar for free food and free entertainment. So Chuck said, okay, what can I do to help? I said, well, first of all, I need help cooking because all I had was a gas grill and a deep fryer. <laughs> a little hard to cook turkeys that way. <laughs> and it was amazing how the community got together. They brought all the food we needed. We got heating trays, kept all the food hot. Wonderful guys that were waiters who weren't working took the day off and came over by me and they were waiters Chuck gave me just a nice thing of wine to serve all the seniors. And we put this whole thing on with entertainment and those people would not leave. They would not go home. They were having such a good time and it was wonderful. And that's how I got involved with Chuck because he would be there for you whatever you needed. So one time he called me up and he said, do you like Rusty Warren? I said, oh God, I love her. Lock her up, then who could not love her? He said, well, she's going to be playing at Man's Country. Man's Country. Hmm. Isn't that where the boys go and they're naked? <laughs> I like my plumbing indoors, okay? So he said, yeah, you'll be okay. They have, usually have towels. It's okay. <laughs> Little did I know, they don't always put them on. <laughs> the show and then they, he invited me for a Wave and Flowers show and a couple other shows that he had there and they were great shows and we went there one time a friend of mine and I and I said come on and go it's safe you know you boys are nice <laughs> well we were sitting up against the wall if you've been in of course you've been in man's country I'll sit <laughs> who has not been to man's country raise your hand <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're sitting there and we're up against the wall and all these guys are coming in from wherever you guys are out there with their towels and they're laying on the floors and everything. They're real nice. And then all of a sudden, and we're sitting low, okay? And, and we're up against the sound booth. And all of a sudden, this one guy stops directly in front of me, turns sideways like this, and drops his towel. <laughs> and I looked at my friend and she said, don't you dare. <laughs> How did she know that I wanted to reach down and say, hey, here I am in man's country. <laughs> you think he would have been embarrassed? <laughs> But Chuck is. He always has been. He's always been around. He only lived two blocks from me. I got invited to his last party on Beacon Street, which was great, and spent a lovely time with him. You guys are going to miss a great, great man. Okay? That's all I have to say. Thank you.